With the NFL Combine behind us, we are now in full swing for NFL draft season. And of course, that means more mock drafts. On this episode, Jet fans, I'm going to be doing my seven-round New York Jet mock draft. This is my second mock draft for the New York Jets, but the first full seven-round mock draft. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions about this, make sure to comment below and what you'd like to see the New York Jets do on draft day. In the first round, I have the New York Jets selecting Jerry Judy, the wide receiver out of Alabama. Now, I know we've heard a lot from a lot of draft experts that the Jets are highly interested in offensive linemen. Now, it's clear this is a very good offensive line draft, and there's a lot of experts that have already talked to Joe Douglas and saying how adamant he is about upgrading the offensive line. But here's the thing. In my mock drafts currently, I have three or four offensive linemen going before the Jets pick at number 11. With all that being said, I have Jerry Judy sliding to them at number 11. Judy is arguably the best offensive player in this draft and the best wide receiver in a loaded draft. Now, the common knowledge would say it would make sense for the Jets to wait to round two to get a great wide receiver, and that does make sense. But I strongly believe the New York Jets will go out and be aggressive in free agency, especially on the offensive line. Jack Conklin is one of their top targets. I do believe they'll bring back Brian Winters. So with free agency being a priority to address the offensive line and some of the best offensive line prospects off the board, I do believe that Joe Douglas will go to getting the best player available, and that's Jerry Judy. And let's let's face it, Jerry Judy is the best route runner in college. He's a 4-5-40 time. He is an explosive playmaker and will be a true number one coming in. Now, the priority may be building a great offensive line around Sam Darnold, but also giving him offensive weapons that will help his development and giving him a wide receiver like Jerry Judy will be invaluable to that development. In the second round, I have the New York Jets selecting Trevin Diggs, the cornerback out of Alabama. At 6'1 and 205 pounds, he is an ideal press corner that fits right into Greg Williams' defensive scheme. With three interceptions and eight passes defense last year, he is a very good cornerback who can start right away for the New York Jets. Now, he has struggled in college with some of the deeper routes and being beaten on by some better athletes. But here's the thing. He was a wide receiver, and he's still kind of learning the position. He's got tremendous athleticism and the size to be a great corner, and I do believe Greg Williams can coach him up. This is a guy who can start day one for the New York Jets and arguably their second biggest problem position on the entire roster after the offensive line is cornerback. I do think we're going to see the Jets put a lot of emphasis on cornerback in this draft as long as the offensive line. But unlike the offensive line, I don't think this is a great cornerback class in free agency, and I don't think you're going to see the Jets go into free agency. There's a couple of rumors about the Jets going in free agency, but even if they get a great corner, they're still going to need at least another corner or two to help fill out this defense. In round three, I have the Jets going to Notre Dame to take Julian Aquara, the 3-4 defensive end and edge rusher. He would have been a second-round pick before breaking his fibula last season. Now, he's not known as a great run defender, but he is a skilled pass rusher. He had four sacks and nine games last year and has been growing as a pass rusher and is very good at getting to the quarterback. He's highly athletic at 252 pounds and can bend the edge. Now, I know medicals are looking clean right now, and if they do continue to be clean, this should definitely be a guy the Jets are interested. They already had a lot of interest at him at the combine, and while he wasn't able to run during the combine, he did impress on the bench press. Now, a lot will have to go into his pro day at Notre Dame, but this could be a very good pass rusher for the Jets to get on day two of the draft that can be plugged in right away. The Jets desperately need a pass rush, and while I don't think they can address it significantly in the first two rounds, here in round three they can get a very good pass rush player, and even if he's only used as a sporadic pass rusher, only comes in in 15 plays a game, if he can make an impact getting to the quarterback, which he has the athleticism to do, this could be a great pick for round three. The second round three pick, I have the Jets going with Daryl Williams, the guard and center from Mississippi State. He was a three-year starter in college and played all four positions along the offensive line. If you remember my last mock draft, I also had the Jets taking him in this similar position because he's a versatile offensive lineman who could potentially be even a day one starter next year for the Jets at center or guard. He's held in high regard and has flexibility to play guard and center positions, which could be integral for the Jets. And even if he isn't a star next year, could provide him to be a valuable backup and has all the potential to be groomed into an eventual starter. In round four, I have the Jets going to Louisiana Tech to take Amik Robertson, the cornerback. He was an incredibly productive cornerback with 14 interceptions in college. However, he's overlooked because of his size at 5'8". However, had a great combine, ran a great 40. And even though the Jets won't be able to use him as an outside corner, he can be a very good slot corner in their defensive system. And it's a position of the Jets need to fill the slot corner position. And even if he can't come in and be a every down slot corner, 
he could be a valuable interchangeable piece in this defense that could be coming off the edge and blitz packages be used in nickel packages and also be used sometimes as a high safety he's a very versatile player with a lot of speed and a lot of athleticism and he's an aggressive and hard-working player despite being only five foot eight he's a constantly into the pile working in the run game and always not afraid not to lay the hit and a lot of scouts have also praised him for taking on bigger challenges and bigger receivers this could be a nice pick and a nice complimentary piece in this defense next season in the fifth round i have the new york jets selecting kyle murphy the offensive lineman out of rhode island he has played guard and tackle in college and he's once again another versatile three-year starter and we're starting to see a pattern here with the offensive line we've seen this with philadelphia before they are looking for very good but also interchangeable pieces along the offensive line and guys that can play multiple position he's not a punishing run blocker but is a very good pass blocker and despite playing at lower competition he has very good athleticism and could be a good project now he might not make an impact next year but could give the jets valuable depth as a player that can play all the five positions along the offensive line primarily guard and center but could swing out to tackle if the jets need him and could develop into a very nice player and a potential starter down the road for the New York Jets. In the sixth round, I have the Jets going to North Carolina State for defensive tackle Laurel Murchison. Murchison is an intriguing prospect. He had seven sacks last year and is a very good interior pass rusher. But the thing I really love about him is a great mower. He's in on every single play and never gives up. And they were starting to see a theme here with what the Jets are looking for. Like Jamal Anno says, they are looking for dogs, which means he's looking for guys to give every single play. Now, I understand the Jets already have a very good defensive line, but they also, it is the strength of the team, and they need to continue to get depth, and getting an interior pass rush, especially in the sixth round, is a valuable piece. And don't forget, in certain areas of this defensive line, they're getting a little bit long in the tooth, and this could be a very nice role player that could get after the passer. And my final pick for the New York Jets out of Illinois State is running back James Robinson. Now, Robinson ran a 4.64 at the Combine, high character, hardworking back, who's versatile, can move out of the backfield, and was a workhorse at Illinois State, logging over 1,000 yards last season. But the real reason the Jets could look for a running back here is because they're going to need some depth. Now, Bilal Powell is a free agent and likely will not re-sign with the Jets. And another, their other running back is Ty Montgomery, who could be a cap casualty once free agency starts. Now, I know Robinson is a very good workhorse and could be a valuable backup back, and the running back position is a funny position for the New York Jets right now. While the offensive line, cornerback, and pass rush get the attention they do deservedly deserve, the running back position is a little bit up in the air right now and could be one of those positions on the team that gets a lot of turnover that no one's really talking about. And Robinson could be a nice backup piece to Le'Veon Bell and could be a nice role piece for the Jets next season given how the running back turnover could be one of the biggest positions we see but don't really talk about. And those are my picks. I would love to hear what you have to say about them. Make sure to comment below and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our latest Jets mock draft content. We'll have it all the way up until draft night. And of course, these will be updating throughout the offseason as free agency progresses. Make sure you follow and subscribe so you don't miss the next Jets seven round mock draft. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is Rich Sports Talk.